So I'm going to start today's video in outside and it's a real wind so I was going to do three different comparisons but we're going to just do this, this one. This is uh, my uh, 19 something, 1990 something Toyota uh, Corolla. You know we have an electric car as well but this is the, t the Toyota Corolla and this is part of the demonstration. So what we're going to do, we're going to put a voltmeter here and we're going to see what volts the battery is right now. And if we can see that, it's 12.16. See if I can jam those prods in somehow. I'm now going to start the car, which is interesting because I've not done that since December. So now at 14.4. Normally cars, the average is 13.8, which is what this video is about. I think we will do another car. We'll, we'll do the electric car next. So I'll just stop the video. So the Nissan Leaf has a normal car battery as well, um, as well as its 680 volt whatever pack. And just looking at that, it's 12.4. So I'm going to get in the car and I'm going to, shall I say, start the car. And with the engine running, or the, the engine doesn't have one, but you know what I mean, with the car on, it's what, 14.38. So that's that car. Let's, let's try Mr. Chippy's uh, Nissan. I saw Mr. Chippy's car, and he's only just come in 10 minutes ago, so it's going to be a little higher uh, at rest, than, and it's a new battery only weeks ago. Um, I can see we've got 12.6 volts amongst the wind. I'll just start the engine. And it's 14.28, 14.29. So that let's bear all those figures in mind. Now we'll go into the workshop out of the wind. So on bench three, which we uh, normally do the videos on, we have this power supply, which is a three amp power supply. It's got LED displays for voltage on the right and for current on the left. You can set the current to a limit, which we have it at a current limit most of the time. Uh, so that if something goes wrong, then it's not going to blow fuses or damage anything. The power supply will shut down. Hence, I enjoy shorting the crocodile clips out. Um, so we're normally running that at 13.8 volts, which is supposed to be there. It's the industry standard for simulating a battery in a car being charged. So when you have the engine running, it has to be at a higher voltage than the nominal voltage. The nominal voltage of a fully charged lead acid car battery is supposed to be 12.8 volts. Obviously that can be lower in, in winter or if the battery is poor, etc, etc. But it's 13.8 is standard. We've seen from the cars outside, they actually charge a bit higher than that. 14.2, uh, 14.4, 14.4. So 13.8 is industry standard. So that's two Nissans and a Toyota you've seen. Can't show you the Renault van, the battery's flat. <laughs> Not used it since uh, Remembrance Sunday. And uh, <laughs> yeah, right, we'll come back to that it's when we get rid of lockdown. So what we're going to now do is we're going to put on the bench my Rotel 230, which has been carefully calibrated and does four watts at 13.8 volts. And what we're gonna do is look at the effect of those different voltages on its power output. So at 13.8 volts, we'll keep the radio, make sure it's on channel 20. actually doing three and a half watts at the moment 3.5 is just there that's four and it's drawing 1.12 amps 
So, let's now change the voltage to the 14.4, which it turns out that most of our cars seem to be doing when they're charging. So now I've got 14.4 on the power supply, and the radio is now doing 3.8, 3.9 watts. So now I'm going to turn the, the power supply down to 12 volts. Now most CB radios, when I read the service manuals, 11.8 is the absolute minimum they will work at, then they'll malfunction. So we've got this at spot on 12 volts. And the radio is now doing 2.1 watts. So put that on a 12 volt power supply, you're doing 2.1 watts. Put it on a 13.8 volt power supply, it's doing 3.5 watts, and have it at 14.4, it's doing 3.8 watts. That's how it's set up. So this is what's happening. Now let's uh, let's see if I can put the radio in view of the camera instead. And when I key up at 12 volts, go dim. Key up again. It's going dim. So it's right at the bottom end of its working capability. So that's why the power supplies for your CB radio and for all two-way radio things, not just CB radio, for amateur radio and for business two-way radio, the power supplies for home base use are 13.8 and it's in order to simulate them being in a vehicle with the engine running. Now, of course, our electric car doesn't have an engine, but once you switch the power onto the car, then the 680 volt battery charges the 12 volt automotive battery and runs the 12 volt electrics that way. So, of course, it, it still has the same effect and it still has to charge above. Uh, a lot of uh, handheld walkie talkies with 10 double A's, you'll find the charger is 18 volts, uh, probably 50 milliamps. So that's what he's you're always charging at a higher voltage than what the normal nominal voltage is of the battery. So hope that's um, made it easy to understand and why a 12 volt power supply simply isn't good enough. Now I don't have any switch mode power supplies in any of our workshops because my experience has been they've generated too much noise and on top of that I have found them to be unreliable. And by unreliable I don't mean it's going to break down in 18 months or just out of warranty or something like that. I mean that you've seen us do some of the power supplies from 1981, some of the old band ones from 1980, and we've rebuilt those. It hasn't taken much work and much expense to bring them right up to spec. With switch mode power supplies, you only need a capacitor malfunction, the whole thing actually blows itself up. So I just don't like that whole concept. I like things to last a very long time. You know, buy one in a lifetime and it lasts you your entire life. This could be a British thing, couldn't it? I mean, this is what we were always supposed to be good at in this country. So there you are. It's a short video and 13.8 volts. That's why. Thank you for watching.